right, welcome back. Today we are talking to people whose life stories sound like a movie. Their lives took dramatic turns when they faced challenges and stepped into the opportunity. What they have to share with us is inspiration that you can script out your own life story. Now, before the age of 11, our next guest knew the definition of struggle from growing up homeless with his biological mother and siblings to sleeping in Grand Central Station and not knowing where his next meal would come from. Well, now he's an executive at one of the top companies in the world. David Ambrose's new memoir, A Place Called Home, shines a light on the mental health crisis, the foster care system, poverty, and how there's more as a community that we can do. The book even has Hillary Rodham Clinton talking about it, saying David shares his deeply personal story and issues, a rousing call to make this more humane and compassionate nation. Tam Flam, please welcome David Ambrose. Thank you. I know. Congratulations Thank on finishing you. a memoir. I know that it is a tough one. I told David when I looked at the cover here, and this is a little boy's face in it, it made me think of that Stevie Wonder song, Living Just Enough for the City. Mm -hmm. And he talks about his child was born, and he goes, the big city consumes, oh, yeah. and life is so hard. Um, and so much of life, the difficulties of it start with parents. Yeah. And your mother, your biological mother, had her struggles yeah. with mental health. Yeah. And that obviously sets the trajectory yeah. for your life. Yeah, I mean, I, I think we uh, walk past homeless people and we see them struggling, and that was my mom. Uh, three kids, no support, and a crumbling social welfare safety net in Manhattan. And she did the best she could, but she's mentally ill. And a lot of times people want to condemn her behavior and her violence. But my mom, if she had breast cancer or any other illness, we would be compassionate towards her. But for mental health, we condemn these people. And my mom, as hard as it was, I opened the book with a dedication to forgiveness for her because yeah. she taught me to do that because of her illness. I love her and I'm actually uh, one of her caregivers today. Wow. You know, in the book, you talk about in great detail, you know, as we said, having to ask for money, you yeah. know, you were outside on the street in Grand Central Station, you wrote, I try to address the countless faces that surge past, but I'm invisible to these people, like all the homeless are across the country, just annoyances to be moved out of the way or cleaned up. You were that kid. Yeah. And we all have seen children and you wonder like, well, but we don't know their story. And you're finally telling that uh, story uh, of that kid uh, that we see. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I tell that story, uh, it was in Grand Central, the Metro North State chain was coming in and people's generosity would determine my day, if my family ate, what would happen to us that night. And the answer is not the individual dollar, although as a child, I was desperate for it. Mm -hmm. We need policies that lift up all of these kids, because mm -hmm. you may not be able to help them yeah. directly, but we can hold our society up to a higher standard. We sent a person to the moon. We should not have homeless children in this country. Okay. No. after those years on the street, you were put in the foster care system and you experienced the horror stories that we've heard about foster care system, but also the beautiful stories yeah. that we hear because you eventually found the perfect home. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I, I think we all wonder, what can we do? And you don't have to become the foster parent or the adoptive parent, but if you can, great. And I had this uh, interaction with this woman who, her name is Holly, and she was the uh, director at a YMCA, and she saw what I was going through. Mm -hmm. And she didn't look around and wonder who's gonna help me. She raised her hand and fought to get me, oh. even though she wasn't a foster parent. Mm -hmm. And she took the remnants of a person who had been ground up oh. and started the process to put him back together. And it was, Bless her, because it was not something that was easy. She had to aggressively love, and I, I took years for me to realize how, how much of an impact she had in my when life. When you say she had to aggressively love, I mean, obviously, we're gonna get to where you are now, yeah. but that aggressive love got you there. What do you mean by that? Because so often, we don't know how to reach people. I came into her home emaciated. I had been starved. I had a really hard relationship with food because the way I was brought up, we were often starving. And one day, I came home, and she had gone to Costco. <laughs> which I never heard of, and the counters were just covered with food. And she was just so casually, she's like, what would you like? And it was just a, you know, a place of love and what a mother does. Yeah. I saw you earlier talking about your child. And 
I had a complete meltdown because to have an open invitation to this bounty, and she did not alienate me. She welcomed me and loved me aggressively and like, what do you want to eat? Let's talk about this. And it took me a long time to understand that starvation is not normal and what families did to me in foster care other than her was not okay. And that this woman was gonna love me not just with food, but with love as well. And I, I don't know if I'd be here without her. Oh, wow. Coming up, we have a surprise. When we come back, more of David's life, which is remarkable. It reads like a movie. It reads like a good book. And we'll talk more about it after the break. Welcome back. Today we are talking to guests who found themselves at crossroads they never thought they would face, but ultimately they prevail. Like my guest, David Ambrose, he grew up homeless and in foster care system. He says as a child, his future did not look hopeful. It was painful, but his life changed dramatically when he's finally given the chance for something we all probably take for granted, love. He shares his story and his inspirational new memoir, A Place Called Home. And before the break, you were telling us about Holly. Yeah. Um, that is the mom who essentially saved your life and puts you on this trajectory to being one of the most successful businessmen in the country. <laughs> I mean, without her, do you think you would be here? I'll tell you this, I wouldn't have had the rich life that I have or met a woman who is a role model and her husband, Stephen, uh, the first male role model that I had in my life um, that loved. and. They taught me so much, and I don't know if I'd have the same life, yeah. but I have had this beautiful life because of her. Oh my gosh, yeah. So, I mean, you know, you can spell love, L-O-V-E. <laughs> you spell it H-O-L-L-Y. Um, H-O-L-L-Y, are you here? Where is I she? I am, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Holly <laughs> Davis Foster Mom. <laughs> Holly, thank you so much for surprising. You should see him. He's smiling ear to ear right here. I mean, what was it about this kid that you saw? We just connected from the first day I met him. He was brought into the YMCA by his then foster mom and he was going to be a teen volunteer in the programs that I worked with. And we just connected. And then he connected with my daughter at the time and it, ju it just worked. And from that point on, um, he was mine. He just didn't live with me yet, but he was mine. Oh my God. When you see um, that he's written this beautiful memoir and, and what he was going on to accomplish, and also even the compassion he still offers for his biological mother who um, faced her challenges, I know all of it has to make you so proud to see the layers of his compassion. We've always been very proud of David. Just from the moment he came to live with us, the strength that he showed adjusting to a new situation, this is, one more amazing thing that he's done, but I'm happy that he dug deep and told his story. It, it's one that it's very hard to to read as a parent and as someone who loves him very much, but it's necessary, I think, for the world to know that you can make a difference and that just because you don't see it happening firsthand doesn't mean it's not happening. Oh, wow. David, you know, we're, this is a live show. We're all going to go back home or walk down the street, and some of us may see someone in distress. Yeah. At some point, we will see a child yeah. and wonder what's going on in that child's life. What do you want us all to truly take from this? Huh. You are the change we're waiting for. Wow. Don't start with what you can't do. Dig deep and wonder, what can I do? If you can't lift that person up that day in that moment, go home and figure out what you can do. Educate yourself. Call your legislator. We have not talked about child poverty at a presidential debate since 1999. Wow. There's 8.4 million homeless children in this country living in poverty, excuse me. We can do better. Yeah. So ask yourself what you can do and then start there, not oh. try and do the hardest thing you can't. Oh my gosh. And that's what Holly did. Thank you so much. Thank you, Holly. David's book is called A Place Called Home. It's available now.